liquid going back up here. Okay, what's significant about the compressor other than the fact that it compresses all the gas, does all the work, and is the heart of the system? What else is significant about it? If this is, who said it? Half point. This is the dividing oh, point. point of it. This dividing is point. the other side. One side is low, one side is high. Pressure. One side is low temperature, the other side is high temperature. One side is vapor going to liquid, the other side is liquid going to vapor. They're just this of each other. So if you got one side down, just reverse it and you got the other side. Because that's what we're doing. Superheat on one, subcool on the other. Put liquid in, turn it to vapor. Put vapor in, turn it to liquid. That's all we're doing. You can get that in your head. You can understand what's going on in the system. It'll put you miles in front of everybody else because you're no longer going to be a parts changer. Because when you put your gauges on, you're going to be able to tell what's happening in that system. <clears throat> so this is where we're going. I ask you, this is the direction of flow. This is the king valve. If I run this in, I can pump the system down. I can work on half the high side and all of the low side. With this open, the system is running at that point, and it's running liquid through here up into the metering device, which could be a thermal expansion valve, or it could be a what? Capillary. Uh, it could be a capillary tube. Capillary. In any event, it drops the pressure. Forces it to go to low pressure, low temperature liquid. It absorbs the heat here. We put superheat in it, bring it down the suction line into the compressor. We pump it into high pressure, high temperature vapor into the condenser, <coughs> condense it back into a liquid, add subcooling to it to hold it in a, in a liquid state, goes into the receiver tank where we can store it. Why, can we, why do we have a receiver tank on an expansion valve and not on a capillary tube? We answered one of the, one of the part of it earlier. What is, what is a capillary tube? How do we define it? Critical charge. Critical charge. Exactly. 12.2 ounces goes in that. Exactly. What if we had an expansion valve in that? What is an expansion valve? Load dependent. Right? That means that if we throw a big load on it, the valve will open up and let more refrigerant go through. It gets it from right out of that receiver tank because we store it in there. And so when we need it, that valve opens up, we can pull it from there. So this isn't critical charge, this is totally load dependent. When we finally pull the load down, the valve pinches down this way. As it does, we start to dam it up behind the valve. We have to have some place for it to go, so we back it up down the liquid line and into the receiver tank where we store it again until we need it. You will never find a receiver tank on a system that has a capillary tube. Because it is a critical charge system, we don't need to store anything anywhere. We only put the exact amount of refrigerant in. That's all you're going to get. You can load that thing up as much as you want to and you're never going to get any more cooling out of it to help pull that load down. It's just going to run at one steady speed. That's it. But with an expansion valve, it's going to open and close with the load to help pull it down faster. Capillary tubes are found on small systems. Expansion valves are found on larger systems that require uh, a system that will adjust to the, to the load demand. If we were to take in 10,000 pounds of potatoes at room temperature and roll them in there, we now have a huge load just rolled in there, a hot, huge load rolled into that walk-in box. As that heat starts to give itself up inside that box, this expansion valve can feel that, that difference and it opens up saying, man, I gotta get a lot of juice in here because I gotta, I gotta bring this thing down, I gotta do it in a hurry. So it opens up and, and floods this thing with liquid. Okay, anything else that you guys need to go over? How does an accumulator differentiate itself from a receiver? How does it do what? Accumulator separates itself from a receiving thing. Well, the accumulator, for one thing, is going to be over on the suction side. 
It's, not, it's going to be on the low side, not on the high side. What is an accumulator for? <coughs> it's to keep from slugging the compressor with liquid. And so the accumulator, we got one over here. 